Thank you for listening to the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast with hosts Clara and Jimmy Hinton. If you're new to the podcast, please subscribe and share so you never miss an episode. Android users can find us and subscribe on your Play Music app. Apple users can find us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Stitcher. You can follow us on Spreaker. And you can find the podcast on jimmyhinton.org and findingahealingplace.com. Please rate our show, subscribe, and share so that we can spread the word. Let's get into the show. Welcome to this week's podcast with hosts Jimmy Hinton and Jimmy's mom, Clara. Well, everybody is hunkered down uh, across the nation. We are still in lockdown for the quarantines. So we are going to talk about that on the podcast. You may be tired of hearing about it, but this is not your average doom and gloom. Because here at the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast, we bring positivity. Right, Clara? We sure do. Actually, we do. There you go. So, yeah. I mean, this is affecting everybody. It is. It's worldwide. Uh, Within the United States, we have not experienced anything like this ever. I had a friend call me this morning who's in her late 70s, and she said, I never thought I'd live to see this day. It's just everything's different. Here it is. Yeah. We're here. So we wanted to talk about uh, the positive aspects of uh, being forced to go online. Uh, I just saw the other day um, several um, video conferencing programs upped the number of people that you're allowed to have uh, because of uh, the number of people who need to get in touch with uh, family members and friends uh, Google Duo, which some people may not know about. Uh, it's a video program, a lot like FaceTime. Uh, they upped the number just the other day from eight people that you can see at one time to 12. And they expect that to increase again. They're going to uh, increase the programming on that. So across just about every single platform, they're increasing the number of people who you're able to see face to face at the same time. Um that's all in response to uh, the quarantines for the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, a lot of churches live streaming that were never live streaming before. Uh, schools are live streaming. Uh, they're having virtual classrooms. Uh, just about every college in the United States right now has gone online. You know, we, we're acting like this is such a shock. And it really is in that we were forced to do this almost overnight. But this was coming when you Mm -hmm. think about it. It really was. um, And actually, um, it's here. Yeah. And and it's not going to go away. No. No. uh, You know, Mom and I were just talking before we started to uh, record. And we said that this is going to create a paradigm shift in the way people work, uh, in the way people do church, in the way people are educated, because we were forced to do it. And that's not a bad thing. Uh, Look at all the people who are working from home. I'm one of them. Uh, I'm forced to work from home. Mm -hmm. Uh, Most of the people at my church are now, who who still have work, they're working from home. So it, it has forced us to not just live in a virtual world, but to have deeper human contact. Can I interject something? I read something from a friend of mine on Facebook yesterday, and she said it's so awesome to look out her window and see daddy's home during the day yeah, playing with their children in their yards. And when you said, you know, uh, you're being forced to work at home and it's a blessing to you. I mean, you, I, I love it. Yes. And I'm loving it. So do your children love it. Yeah. It, it's so good for so many people. Yeah. And, and, you know, we don't want to sound, um, we don't want to sound insincere, uh, because, because we do realize that there's a great fear, especially among, uh, survivors of abuse. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this before that the isolation, the forced isolation, uh, can be a very triggering thing for survivors. Well, we actually addressed in, in, completeness of our uh, podcast last week 
about the difficulty and, and the extra pain and risk that is out there to our younger children now that school is, you know, out of session, a forced out yeah. of session. So we know there are the, the um, horrific things that are happening, but there are also the very positive aspects of this. And that's what we want to address today. Yeah. So we definitely want to acknowledge uh, the people who are genuinely living in fear, um, the the people who are in increased uh, uh, um, danger because of the isolation. Uh, we definitely want to acknowledge that. We want to address it. We want people to do everything that they can to make those people feel seen uh, and to provide accountability uh, and to reach out to families who they think uh, may be in harm. So we definitely want to acknowledge that. So this is not a, a naive approach. Uh, but the flip side of that is that not everything is happening is bad. Uh, like you said, I, I've seen more moms, dads, uh, together walking with their children than I ever have before. Me too. Uh, and I, and it, it's it's beautiful to see the uh, families come out together. Yes. Uh, they're out walking. They're, you know, they're practicing safe distancing and all that stuff. Yes. Uh, nobody's being reckless, at least that I've seen in our no, community. We, uh, our community has been awesome. Yeah. So um, it's really neat to see that family yes. dynamic. Uh, we've experienced a much healthier family dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love it. And and with the church too, um, I was just talking to uh, two of my elders today, and we were saying, you know, what's really incredible is how closely connected we are as a church family now, more so than ever before. Um, people are calling daily to check up on each other. Um, my kids, uh, they have a chart that they made yesterday. Uh, it's a weekly chart, and each day they they put down an individual or a family and that's the family who they're going to bless for the day. Oh, I so love they do that, that um, love 7 days, that. so it's Sunday to Sunday. Wow. Uh they're doing it one week at a time and then they come up with a uh, a project that they're going to do that really would connect with that person individually. I so it's not that. just a, you know, for this person we're going to yes. do cards or whatever. It's what would this person really find meaningful. And my kids are doing it all. They're doing 100% of it. It So they sit down at the table and they work on that together um, as siblings. And they're, what, nine, six, and four. Um, So to see them sit down and work together and come up with these ideas is phenomenal. That that never happened before. Not that they never cared for people before. Right. It's but, just a new way of showing. Yeah. Them. And, and they, yeah. they feel the importance of the intentionality because yes. they miss the person to person contacts. Right. Um, and so because they're feeling the loneliness, um, they're coming up with creative ways to reach out to other people who are feeling loneliness. And we're seeing this, uh, I mean, really across the board with our entire congregation. Um, everybody is doing this. I love that. I, yeah, I just it's love, really neat. I love what you told me the other day that um, one of your elders, or maybe it's both, are calling people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was one time, one of my elders. Whereas, yeah, yes, and yeah. Um, whereas before, this person may have been these persons may have been overlooked. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he took always, the directory. He yeah, took the the church it. directory, and he That's said, "I'm going works. down in alphabetical order. I'm calling every single person love who's that. on the directory." I love that. It's yeah, wonderful. and he said, "I'm ju- all I'm doing is calling just to see how they are, and I just want to I want to hear their voice." Mm-hmm. I thought that's really cool. We're talking to each other more. Yeah, you notice that. Mm-hmm. It, it, people yeah. are actually talking. Neighbors are being neighbors now. Yeah, it's, it's a whole lot of positive circling yeah. from this. So we we wanted to talk mostly about um, what we're seeing with the shift to online worship and. You know, I, I I talked about it a little bit last week, but one of my uh, one of my pet peeves, I guess, is when people only post bad articles about the church, um, as if you know we need to make it a point to show just how bad and how dirty and how awful church people are, and uh, stay away from churches. You know, you hear that a lot. Don't go to church. Don't never have anything to do with organized religion. Well, I understand some people. They've had really bad experiences, and they probably can't 
step foot inside of a church building ever again. I fully acknowledge that. I think Jesus acknowledged that with people. Um, oftentimes people begged to follow him and he said, no, go home and be with mm-hmm. your family. Right. Um, so, you know, again, we certainly acknowledge that, but I think sometimes we forget that there, there are some very positive things about, uh, about a lot of churches. Not all churches are bad. Um, a lot of them are, but not all of them are. And, and there again, the whole church in er- different areas is not bad. There are right. always your super wonderful, God fearing, compassionate mm-hmm. people within a church family. Sure. So, you know, this this force to go online, um, we wanted to kind of walk through some of these positive aspects of it. Um, number one, more people are able to worship. Um, you have people who, in the comfort of their home or in the privacy of their home, they're not going to be judged. They don't have somebody judging them because there's always that one person, right? Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's usually wearing a plaid suit, right? <laughs> And somebody comes in and they make this off the wall comment that's really offensive, really judgmental. And uh, when you're when you're doing online church, you don't have to worry about that. You can be yourself. I'm I'm smiling here because a a thought came to me as Jimmy was talking when I was a young mother, and his dad was the preacher. I would sit on a pew and line my kids up from oldest to youngest, and believe me, it was a chore to get ready for church. And Jimmy, you know, it it was really hard to get everybody dressed and ready and seated. So for the little ones, I would bring crackers because it was a long time from breakfast until we went through Sunday school and then had a, a break and then we got through church and then drove the half hour home. There was a lady in church who wrote a letter, a very, very long letter to the men of the congregation about how horrible it was that I brought crackers for the kids. And that, I, I'm just going to say that does make you a horrible person. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to throw that out well, there. <laughs> you know, it, it was, um, it was awful because what I needed was someone to sit on that pew and help me. I didn't need to be criticized, but to have this um, available, this worship online would have been nothing next to a miracle, especially on days when kids were fussy and crying and had fevers. Mm-hmm. And I had to miss the total worship because of that. You yeah, because you're trying to, yep, you're trying to wrestle kids right. and keep them quiet and I not was. offend Sister yes. Susie sitting at the end right. of the pew. It, and it, yeah. What a blessing this would have been that I didn't have to miss the, the singing and the lesson and the prayers. But so anyway, I didn't mean to take that no. thought and go with it. But but for mothers, you know, who are struggling, what a blessing this is. Well, one of the things, too, you know, we talk about people with uh, different shifts, people who work uh, night shift and they're sleeping during the day. Absolutely. Uh, your medical yes. workers, your... Yes. Um, your truck drivers, your, you have all kinds of people who they, they can't make church service and we, and we've developed them. We've designed them around our convenience, uh, not around the convenience or, um, or thought of people who are working their butts off. They're, Mm -hmm. they're away from their families when, when their families are awake and alert and playful, they're sleeping because they have to. Right. So they work you know, all night. Yeah. we've we've not accommodated them very well, and I think that's one of the great benefits uh, for more people being able to worship. Um, you know, and then of course we mentioned the people who can't step inside of a building because it's triggering. Well, they can still get uh, worship. They can still find churches that are safe churches. And they can they can watch online in the amen, comfort of their home, amen, and and that's amen. great. Yes, and amen. we've been yes. we've been intentional at our church about uh, specifically mentioning those people and saying you yes. are part of this body. Mm-hmm. Um, we may never see you step foot inside of this building, and that's okay. Um, you are still very much a part of this body, and we we welcome you. I and I can't say enough 
about the elders and you, Jimmy, for opening your arms in that way and being very intentional like that. Yeah. That that has helped many, many, many people. Well, we talk about people, too, who are in abusive situations. Um, we, we actually have multiple people uh, in our community who uh, they're permitted to go to Bible studies during the week at the building, but not on Sunday worship. Yes. Uh, so we have... Uh, we have one one of our members in particular uh, that's be, that's been his ministry is ministering to uh, having a Bible study for wives uh, whose husbands do not permit them to come on Sunday, and so he'll he'll remind me every now and then. He says, "You know, uh, look beyond who's here on Sunday." Mm-hmm. He said, "The church is much bigger than this." He said, "We have we have some people who." They are a part of this body, and he said they are struggling. This is a very real thing. I I live still in the community of Shanksville, small community of about 240 people. About 15 years ago, there was a little lady whose husband passed away, and unknown to many of us in the community, uh, she had great difficulty getting to church. She could walk there. She was within walking distance, never had her license. But what happened afterward was something that she didn't share until her husband died. He would wait in the bushes by their home, and he beat her if she went to church. And I remember her telling me at the post office, that was our meeting place, about this. And after he died, she did get her license. She took his car and drove it into a tree. No, I hope she, this <laughs> is the I best story. I loved her for telling me this. She knows I work in the area of grief. She said, I went to the cemetery and she said, God, forgive me. I ran that car back and forth over his grave so many times I tore the ground up. And <laughs> that just, is great. But she was not permitted to go to church without knowing that when she left, he would be waiting there. And he would beat her hmm. for going to church. Yeah. Very real. And she wasn't, she's not alone. There probably were, very common. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's probably very common. Yes. So, yeah, I think that's one of the great benefits of um, of being online. You know, it, it, people can, in the, in the secrecy of their home. Right. They can worship Absolutely. with people. Absolutely. And at Absolute, least, yes. And at least, you know, I know it's still somewhat passive, but we still try to try to be very intentional about acknowledging the people who are who are watching with us who may be in uh, abusive situations right. or, or who may be triggered by being at church. And they're very, very much welcome with us. Um, so, yeah, that's very important. Um, another point, too, uh, that we wanted to make is that we can push replay. Uh, we can hear the lesson over and over, the singing, the prayers. Um, Bible studies, whatever it is, you can go back and you can you can watch that content over and over. If there's a message that really resonated with you, um, that really spoke to your heart, you can go back and you can listen to it. Personally, Jimmy, the prayer that you had this Sunday was so powerful and touched me in such a way that I was so blessed that I can go back and push replay on that. Mm -hmm. I have appreciated that so much. And the the songs, um, the beginning song is one of my all-time favorites. And I just sat there and the tears were rolling, just rolling. And I thought, I'm so thankful. I can hit replay any time I want to play that over again. Mm -hmm. It's mine to worship my God. Yeah. And I love that. I'm so thankful yeah. for this blessing. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's a huge blessing. Um, another point we wanted to make is, is that we're more free to worship. Um, we mentioned before the moms, they don't have to worry about keeping their kids quiet and, you know, playing under the seats and who's going to get offended at that and who's going to tap on my shoulder and say that you need to take your kids downstairs. They're being disruptive. That kind of garbage is, you, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you don't have to worry, worry about uh, what clothing you wear to church. Uh, you know, is somebody going to be offended at something that you wear or look down on you because you can't afford decent clothing? Um, you just don't, you don't have the criticism 
that you have. And it's a shame that that criticism there in the first place. It, it shouldn't be there. But we live in a yeah, crappy is, world right. where people <laughs> stay and do crappy things. And uh, that's just a reality. Realistically, it's in our schools. It's in our places of where we work. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, the way we dress, the way we uh, fix our hair, all of those things are criticized, sadly. And it's yeah. carried over into our places of worship. Yeah, I want to share something that that was really um, just very moving for me on Sunday. So while we were live streaming our church service, we had uh, we had a family take a family picture, and they were watching uh, they were watching our service live. They sent it to our uh, our. We have two guys that run the live stream, and they sent the picture to those guys and they said, we're in our living room. The whole family's together. We're watching you live right now. We are loving it. And they said, um, we want, we want to bless somebody. And they said, is there something that we can do to bless somebody? Which, uh, really is our, our next and final point. We feel more connected to others, uh, by knowing that we're part of the online church family. We can, we can read the scriptures. We can sing at the top of our lungs, um, you know, we, we can do things like that where we feel more connected. And so this one family said, is there anybody in your congregation that, uh, could use a call? Um, we want our kids to be the ones to, uh, to talk to this individual or these individuals. And we just, we want to bless them. And That's it was something that I had said in my sermon beautiful. about, yes. about us, mm-hmm. uh, blessing right. other people. Right. And so they were moved by that. So as soon as worship was over, we uh, we contacted one of our members who actually is listening right now. So hi, Sue. <laughs> she's, one, she's one of our patrons, uh, one of our church members. She lives out west now. And um, Sue is just – Sue, you are an absolute angel. But uh, we thought of Sue because, uh, you know, Sue is – away from family. She moved away and uh, doesn't have family out where she's living now. And so I, I called Sue as soon as we were done with the live stream. And, and I said, is it okay if, uh, if this family contacts you? And she said, absolutely. So yesterday, uh, I got the nicest text message back from Sue. And uh, Sue, I just want to tell you how much that made my day. Um, and she said, thank you for thinking of me what a delightful family. She's like, I had an incredible conversation. And she's like, what a blessing. So these are the kinds of things that that are happening more and more because we have this need to be connected. And um, and the connections that we have are no longer the hurried phone calls that right. you're trying to squeak in in the middle of 9,000 other projects that you're doing. It's people are stuck at home. People are a lot of people without jobs or they're working from home. Uh, we're not able to see people face to face. We're not able to shake hands and hug people the way that we did before. So we're looking for, we're craving meaningful dialogue and uh, connectedness with other people. And how beautiful that is. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, so I, I hope people are encouraged by this. And, um, you know, again, not everything is as roses. Um, we're still, in the middle of a, a nationwide lockdown, uh, a lot of people are are really strained financially. Uh, as la- as we mentioned last week, we have an increase in abuse uh, because families are stressed out. You have alcoholics who can't get alcohol, uh, like in our state, they closed all the state stores down. Uh, so getting are, alcohol is um, very difficult. I just got an update because of that very issue. They are considering reopening our state stores in a week. Yeah. So these are very real problems that exist. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you know, we mentioned the the survivors who are really triggered and, and feel um, tremendous isolation or the pangs of isolation uh, because it's reminiscent of what they experienced at the hands of their abusers. Uh, so we definitely acknowledge that we, we sympathize with those people and um, all the more reason why we need to make our connections with people more intentional and to really think of those people uh, who are struggling and, and who are uh, lonely, who are anxious, and we need to reach out to them in, well, and, in, in very meaningful ways. Right. And Jimmy and I are um, trying hard to make this podcast even more intentionally um, 
close for all of us. We, we want to feel like we are a community with this podcast. We hope that um, we are doing that. We invite you to um, reach out and let us know what we can do uh, other ways, if there are other other ways we can help you with this isolation. We, we want to feel like we are a community also yeah. with you. And we, um, we wanted to do something for our patrons, too. Um, it's just impossible to do it for everybody. Um, we, are, we are still limited in time and resources and all that. But uh, f- for our patrons, uh, you know, we, we do a, a monthly Q&A. And we were just talking to some of them, and you know, some of you guys have experienced uh, or expressed rather that uh, you know you're you're lonely, and this is hard on you. So, uh, in the middle of April, um, we are going to do just kind of a hangout. So it's just n- nothing more than to facilitate just spending time with people, right. um, and so that'll be via video, and um, we're just going to spend time with each other and and kind of care for each other and just laugh and you know encourage uh, each other yeah, yeah encourage so you know those sorts of things are going on in, in different pockets of communities so for the people who really feel isolated um honestly I, my first recommendation is to dial back social media um i have spent so much less time on Facebook and Twitter. And guys, I'm telling you, I I feel healthy. You look healthy. <laughs> I know. You look I healthy. know. It, yeah. it is so toxic. Um <laughs> there are there are genuinely good, good people on social media. Um and and a lot of good people who post a lot of good things Absolutely. and a lot of encouraging things. And I have friends who um I've just gotten really, really close to who I never would have known had it not been for social media. So I'm all for social media. Um, I am all for Facebook. I am all for Twitter. But my goodness, (laughs) are people all about doom and gloom all the time in crisis? I can't take it. No, I I can't either. I've limited myself so much. Uh, We need to be selective with what we hear and read and you know listen to in social media because it's full of garbage yeah it really is and, it, it, and, have, and all it takes is a little bit of uh, a little bit of negativity uh, to overpower yes. and overshadow all the good that's going on and there's so yeah. much good yeah and i wish we could I, I should probably do what one of my sisters did because she just um she actually did it to all of her friends she went through her entire friend list and muted everybody she said, she said, my news feed is completely, she's like, it's crickets. There's nothing there except advertisements. That's it. And she's like, if I want to know what any one of my friends are up to, I click on their profile. Yeah. She, cause she's like, I didn't want to do away with, um, with right. social interaction with people. Right. But she's like, I don't want to hear everybody's complaint and see pictures of people's bleeding butts and all these things that people post that are just nonsense. Yes. You know, all the random, weird, yep. gross oh, things that people post. Oh, my. So anyway, that's kind of my <laughs> little soapbox. Um, that's just me personally. I, I've i spent far less time browsing, and, and that's a waste of time anyway. Um, but I, 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 I've stayed on social media just to stay connected with uh, people who have who've really encouraged me and and there there is a lot of good stuff on social media we just a lot of good selective. stuff yeah but be yeah with, with just what we listen to and who we connect with don't let social media destroy you um because it can happen and it can happen quickly um so be be intentional about your connections and uh we'll end with that truth bomb um be very intentional about your connections and find somebody who's struggling uh, and reach out to them and just bless them today. Thank you for tuning into this episode. We'll catch you next time. Thanks again for listening to today's episode of the Speaking Out on Sex Abuse podcast. Thank you to our patrons who make this podcast possible. If you found it helpful, please follow on Spreaker, subscribe on Google Play Music, 
Apple Podcast or Stitcher. If you believe in what we do, consider supporting the podcast by becoming a patron and check out the cool rewards our patrons receive. Share with your friends and tell the world. Join us in speaking out on sex abuse so we can change the tides and prevent abuse.